In this video, I'll show you how to make a photography website in WordPress by using SeedProd, the best drag and drop WordPress website builder. So I have a clean installation of WordPress and we can head over to seedprod.com and click the orange button here to set up an account. I'm gonna be using the pro version of SeedProd for this video. And once you have an account set up, let's go ahead and log in. Here on the left-hand side, let's enter your email address, your password and click login. Once you're logged in, let's click on the second tab from the left here called Downloads. And we're gonna click on the big orange button here to download SeedProd Pro. Great, we also need the license key here in the bottom left-hand corner. You can click the icon here to copy that to clipboard. Now we can close this tab. We don't need this any longer. Let's come back to WordPress in our admin area and we wanna install the plugin. So on left-hand side, let's go to Plugins and Add New. And at the top, we're gonna click on Upload Plugin. We can actually drag and drop this zip file right here, or you can click Choose File and select this zip file from your hard drive and click Install Now. Next, let's go ahead and activate the plugin. And Seabrard's gonna ask you for the license key. Let's just paste that right here. We copied that earlier and click Verify Key. And you should see a green success message here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this tab at the bottom of my browser. Great, now with Seabrard, we can create full WordPress websites by using the Theme Builder. So on the left-hand side, now that we have Seabrard installed, we can click on Theme Builder here. And here we can see our theme templates. So these are template files that will create your website and you can fully customize every single one. Now these are not pages, these would be applied to pages and posts and different parts of your website. So for example, you could have a single page template that controls all of your pages and the design and layout of that page. Or if you really wanted to, you could have a unique one for each page. To save some time, let's go ahead and click on theme template kits. And here you can see all of the pre-made website kits that come with SeedProd. They're developed in-house by our professional web designer. I'm gonna click in the search here and go by photography. And we have two options here. We have photography portfolio theme and photography website theme. Now you could use another theme in here if you like. This one is just catered to that specific type of website. So I'm gonna click this one here and click the orange button to import the files. Great, now this will bring you back to the theme templates and you can see all of the files that it imported. So we have a homepage template, a blog template, search results and archives, single post, single page, etc. You can see all the pieces of your website. We even have a header and footer here. To activate this theme, Let's go ahead and click on the top right corner here, enable Seaprod theme. I'll just turn this on and we'll click OK a couple times here. So here's our home page that you can see. It's pretty simple. We can fully customize this if we like. We have projects, about, and contact. Let's go ahead and start working on this to customize it. I'll come back to the admin area and we'll look at the header first. If we come down, we can edit the design. So here we can see the Seaprod page builder and we have our header that is loaded inside of here. We have the different columns and sections and row and the blocks, the blocks are the orange parts. And we can actually drag the blocks from the left-hand side here under the block section into our page. So for example, if we want, we can scroll down a headline. We can just drag that in here. And now we have a headline. Now this doesn't make much sense here. So we'll delete this one and say, yes, delete. So here we can see our logo and our menu. And on the left-hand side here, if we click on the block settings for the logo, we can see the options change on the left-hand side. So here we have an option for the image. We can go ahead and delete this one if we want. And now you can upload your own image or stock image. Now a stock image wouldn't make much sense for a logo. So I'll click on use your own image and then I'm gonna upload my logo here. Once you upload your logo, you can click select and that'll import it into your website here. You have different options for sizing. If you wanna link it, where you want it to go. So my website here at the link is actually on a subdirectory here under slash SP. So I'll just update that link. We have different templates. If you wanna add shadows and borders around it and advanced styles for the shadow image spacing, etc. I'm just gonna leave that how it is. And then on the right hand side, we have our links and our menu. So here we have home projects about and contact. Now this is just using the simple menu. There are WordPress menus, the ones that are built into WordPress that you can set up easily right here. And then you can just use that and it'll show here just like your simple menu as well. For this example, I'm just gonna keep it simple with the simple menu and you can click on one here, for example, home. I'm just gonna go ahead and update the link there. Other than that, it's fine. If you want to copy or duplicate one, you can just hit the duplicate button. If you want to delete one, you can just hit the trash can. If you want to add a new one down here, you can do that. And you can also drag and drop them if you want to change the order. You can see that that updates instantly. So I'm just going to go ahead and update all of the links here because the URL is different on the website that I'm using. You probably don't have to do this step. You can change the links here. If you want to add a different type of page, you can create new pages. It's very easy to do. Here you can change the font size. If you want it to be a little bigger, the space between, you can add a divider in between. For example, there's a pipe delimiter that is between there. And you can change the alignment if you like. So under here we have advanced. All of the advanced options for topography, 
menu, spacing, attributes, device, visibility, animation, etc. Once you're happy with that, let's go ahead and save this. And I'm not super happy about the font with the menu here. So if we refresh, it's a little bit hard to see on my screen here. So I'm going to come back and let's go down to the settings here. And this is going to take us to our global CSS file. And you can also get to this file from the theme templates where the list was. Now, this is just a preview of all of your fonts and text and buttons and colors, everything that's on the page. Now, this one, this website is pretty simple with just the black and white color style. So let's look at colors. You can see all of the black quite a bit going on here. What I wanted to change is actually the font. I'm not a fan of this font here. I'm going to change it to the Nito, just something different and simple. So I'm going to change that. And I think that's fine. Everything else is fine. Let me check out normal hover. You can check out the header color, the H1 to H6. So you can customize every single uh, size there for your headers, your body text, your link colors. You can have those stand out. Maybe you want a different color. So if I change that to blue, you can see blue right here. I'll just leave that for black for now because I don't know how it looks on all the other pages. Great. Once you're happy, you can go through your buttons, forms, layouts, and custom CSS and save this. And I'll just exit out of here. And now if we refresh our page, we can see that the fonts have updated here. Now, if you've noticed that something didn't update and it's still the old font, there might actually be a font override on the block itself. So if you put a block style, it'll override the global CSS. So just keep that in mind. So now we can see we have the new logo. We have the new menu here. And if we click, it actually should work and goes to the proper URLs. So here we can look at the projects page and we can see that we need to add some gallery images. We have an about page here that we can look at. And we have a contact page here. Now this website's pretty simple, so it should be easy to customize. We click the logo, it should bring us back to the home page. Next, let's look at the footer at the bottom. Now this looks fine, it's just simple. So if you want to modify it, there is a footer file here. I'm not sure if there's any need to actually update this. I'll change the copyright footer here. So you can put your name or whatever the photography website is called. And then you can go through the options here, the font size. And it actually looks like it might be using the old font. So if we go under advanced and topography, you'll see that it's not using the global, it's using a local block style. So let's go to default and you can see now it'll use the global. So that's just an example. If you're using one of these templates, you might want to check that if you're not sure why it's not using the global style. So just set it to default and everything should be back to normal. Just save this and close out. So now when we refresh, our header should look good and our footer should look good. And again, these are template files, so they should show on every single page. So now we can see the updated footer on this page and our about page, etc. Now let's take a look at the home page itself. So here we can come and look at the home page file. We'll add edit design and we can see the page in here. We can see the template is giving a preview of what the header looks like here and the footer at the bottom. Now if you wanted to change the text here for this headline, we just go to block settings and select this and you can change the text here. And here I just added an emoji. You can copy that from another website or you can hit windows key period on your keyboard and select one. I'm not quite sure on Mac, unfortunately. And then you can change the font size here. If you want this a little bit different, we can go ahead and center this and you can move on to the second piece of text here. There are advanced options here for shadows and colors and spacing. If you want to change that, let's go ahead and select this text here and you can update this if you like. I think it looks fine for me and I'll just center that. There's also social media links here. So if we look at block settings, I kind of like everything centered to be honest. So I'll leave those there. But you can add Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and add a new share. And we have many different options here to select from. You can do the same thing where you can customize them, delete them, copy them, etc. I'll just leave them how they are for this. You can simply click on one for the block settings and change the URL. So when they click on that, it'll go directly to your custom URL for Facebook, Twitter, etc. There's different themes here. So default or stacked. I kind of like the stack, so I'll go with that. And the different sizes, so medium small or large here. I'll go with large and we have different templates for them. If you want to change the style instantly, there's also some advanced options here as well, which I think it looks fine just how it is, but you can go through those if you like. Now I find that it's a lot of white going on up here. So I'm going to select the purple section here. And instead of having that background at the bottom, I'm going to select a background up here at the top. I'm just going to select a random image here. Let's go with this one. And there you can see it We're, we can set the background color in case the image doesn't load, maybe a blue or a light blue would look fine. So if we remove that image, you'll see that you'll see the blue color. And underneath the background here, we have the background position. So you can go through these. This is just the positioning of where you'd like the background. There's many different options here. For example, full screen cover or full screen cover fix. The fix one actually stays in place. 100% with bottom, if you want to change that, top, etc. 
I think that looks pretty good. Here you can dim the background if you want it to be a little bit darker. You could change that, maybe have white text instead of the dark. I think it looks fine how it is. And then the section width. You also have advanced options here. And you can actually add a particle background if you want. I'll just enable this. And you'll see the polygons that are added there. One that I like a lot is the space one. So it just adds these kind of particles that float around inside. You can change the opacity of that if you like. If you just want them faint. It just adds something that catches the eye a little bit, which is kind of cool. Now I just noticed that my background's actually repeating here. So I'm going to come back. We'll just select a different one here. Let's go with 100 width bottom. Now it's a little bit hard to hear to see. So what I'm going to do is select this row and select the options. I'm going to go ahead and add a background color to it. Now here under the options for the color, I actually have an opacity wheel here. So I can bring this toggle down and put a light background on it. So you can see through it a little bit, but you can still see the background. Great. Now below that, we have the gallery image here. So here we can upload multiple gallery images to display on your homepage. Now you might be able to add enough here that you just get rid of your projects page completely because it does show projects there as well. Or you could just duplicate and use the same thing. So here you can add gallery images and you would just select the ones that are in your library here. So I'm just going to upload a bunch of pictures here that I got. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different pictures. I just grabbed these off of Unsplash just for this example. Great, so here's the six images that I selected and uploaded, and I'm just gonna click on create a new gallery. You can add captions to these, so I'll just put in caption one, caption two, et cetera, for examples. And down here, I'm gonna click on insert gallery. Now here you can see our images, and it has the caption below there. You can see the options on the left-hand side here under settings, and we can change the columns. So if we want them to be one each, two, three, four, five, et cetera, you can go ahead and do that. I'll, I think I'll keep it at three. We also have the spacing here if you want to add more or less. So you can bring it a little bit closer. You have the link to the media file or the attachment itself. The media file, if you click, it'll actually open in a light box, which is nice. And you have arrows here to go through them. On the left-hand side here, for the image size, we're going to keep it to large because that'll have the quality of it better. And the order by, by default or random. I'll just randomize this. And yes, that we want to use the light box. We also have the advanced options here. You can add a shadow if you like, a text color, an image border, if you want to add border, you can curve the corners if you like with the border radius. If we come down, we can look at spacing in between the sections, attributes, animations, etc. I'm actually going to select this whole thing and go animation effect and do a nice fade in. So when the page loads, it fades all of this in. Okay, great. Once we come down, you can see this section here. Again, you could just do the same thing as the header. Select the row. You could change the background image here to something that makes more sense for you. And then you can go ahead and click on the text. You could update the text here and then the text underneath it. So once you're happy with everything, let's go to the top and click Save. Now we can close this. And if we come back to see Pride and Refresh, you should see your new homepage. Great, so if I scroll down, we can see that this will fade in along with the images and our footer. And it's all very simple looking, but nice. I think it looks good for a photography website. Now again, you can completely customize this however you wish. Now you just come under your sub pages and do the same thing. So here we have projects. Let's go ahead and look for the projects page. Now this would be under the single page template most likely. So what we're going to actually look for is the page itself. Since we're not going to edit the template, let's go under pages and all pages. And here we can see projects and we'll edit with Cprod. Great. Now this is using the same thing here. We just have a simple gallery here. So we have single or multiple. So let's go ahead and add a gallery image and we can select these and click create new gallery. You have captions here if you want to enter those or not. And then you have the same settings underneath here. Settings, how many you want wide, the spacing. If you want them closer or further away. Here you have the aspect ratio. So if you want to change this, you could go ahead and do so. I'll do the one for one, but for now. And if you added more images, maybe you could get away with putting them closer together and having rows like this. Kind of look a little bit more like the Instagram feeds. If we come down, we have an overlay here. So right now you have the caption that's showing up if it has one. You can change that to the title, the alt, or the description, background color, text, overlay, etc. cetera. We also have advanced options here. So for example, we could do the same thing with the animation. We could add the fade effect here with a fade in. I think that looks good. And of course, this would be a page full of projects, so you'd probably have row after row after row. If you want to add more content, you could just simply drag blocks into from the left side into the right side. So maybe a little about us or whatever you want to put at the end. But there you go. You can create an easy projects page here, if you like, by doing it this way. Go ahead and save this page and I'll exit out. Next, we want to do the about page. Go ahead under pages and all pages and look for about us and edit with Cprod. Now here, it's the same process. 
it looks like a lot of white here. So maybe if you wanted like the last page, you could add a background on the section here. So for about, you could use a stock photo, find a nice photo that you like and just add it in here. And I'll do a full screen cover or maybe the bottom. There we go. For the text, you could select this, go under advanced for color and just change it to white. And you can do that for all of your pages if you like to be more consistent. And you could come down, here's your picture. If you wanna update this, delete it and you could use your own picture. And then on the right hand side, we have the name. So your personal name or whatever you wanna use. Let's put C prod for the example. And then your bio or your text here about you or your business. And then you have a list of clients here. This is just simple layout with text. There's nothing really to go over here. You have an image here in a block. So you can just delete that block and upload your own logo or other logos for companies and businesses. At the bottom, we have a simple headline and some text here as well. Maybe this would be a good place instead to capture some emails. So here we could do, we could use a search block and use opt-in and we could drag an opt-in form here. At the top, you could say, join my newsletter and update the text here or completely remove it if you want. Let's go ahead and select the block settings for this. And the one thing I wanna look at is the submit button and the button color. Let's go ahead and maybe make that white and we can change the text to a black or we can use the templates here. These are pre-made for the input fields. You can see those update here a little bit. And for the button color itself, I'll just go with a dark gray or a light gray somewhere around here. I think that looks fine. Once you're happy again, hit save and we'll close out. And we have one last page here. Let's refresh our project so you can see that. And then we have an about page. You can see the headline that we changed here for the about and the projects is different. So maybe you could update your projects to be similar to this one if you like. And then lastly, we just have the contact page. If we come down though, we can see the clients and the newsletter and then the contacts page. Let's go ahead and modify this page. Under pages and all pages, we can select contact us and edit with seed prod. Here we have that same kind of background. So I can select a different image and I'll change this to 100% width bottom and we'll change the text to white. This will just help give it a little bit of character. I think that looks fine. And then we have the map on the left-hand side. This may be the location of your business. If you wanna change this, you can put in the location the zoom, the height, if you wanna change that, you can go ahead and do so. And then on the right-hand side, we have the contact details, along with your phone number, your email, and a contact form down here. There's also an Instagram here, if you wanna add this, or you get add different information, or if you don't want a section, you could just simply delete that if you don't wanna use it. There you go, once you're happy with this page, just simply hit save and hit contact us and refresh. You can see the simple changes that we made. The last thing that I want to show you is if you are collecting emails, you can go ahead and click on connect at the top left here, and you can actually connect your favorite third-party email marketing service. For example, if you're using constant contact, you can click on connect, click on connect new account and paste the API key in here that they would provide for you. Simply hit connect and then you're good to go. They would then be able to manage the email list for you. Once you're happy with everything, let's go ahead and save and we can exit out of here. And now you should have your complete website after fine tuning it. We'll scroll down here, you can see the images. We have the footer here. We can click on these and preview them. You have your social media links, you have your projects. Now this one we would expect to have more rows of different ideas or projects here. We have the about page. We have the information. The, we have a join newsletter at the bottom. You could add that to every part of your website, maybe even put it in your footer so you don't have to change it in multiple places. And then lastly, we have the contact page here with a map, some information. And it's just a simple, nice page. So there you go. I hope you found this video helpful on how to create a photography website and how you can fully customize it easily without ever writing a single line of code. If you found this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and watch these videos to learn more about Seed Prod. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.